Hello Futsal family, welcome to my YouTube. In terms of a name, I was thinking of Futsal Nomad. Obvious reasons, I love Futsal, I love travel. My name backwards spells Nomad, so could be a good name for it, let me know what you think. At the minute it's just Damon Shaw Futsal, that's my YouTube. Um, you can subscribe down below. So I'm just going to document my time here in Malta with semi-regular vlogs. I'll try and do weekly but well, I've been threatening to do this for three weeks so I can't promise I'll do it weekly but um, yeah I'll try and check in whenever I can give you updates on what I've been doing decisions I've made etc and so why did I come to Malta basically in as soon as I'd left Tramia me from Suiki United got in touch via LinkedIn and basically proposed that I come and build something like we built at Tramia. Now for me at the minute English futsal is in a good place. It's I think it's on the cusp of becoming recognised in Europe and even the team's going a bit further and becoming becoming professional. Not quite professional but certainly acting more professional and been more organised. Still not there yet. You know, even even my last club, we were training twice a week, and I think that was probably above average for most teams in the UK. And we had a very good attendance at, at training. That was that was always you know a big positive of, of the team we had at Tramia. But it's difficult in England. Still, people are putting football first. Putting there's a, people have jobs, people have lives. You know, there's there's a lot going on in England that puts football down the pecking order. So I think to find a club in England that was really taking football seriously is would have been difficult. I had a few offers, um, nothing that was financially like Malta. Um, you know, a couple of a couple of offers to go and coach a team for free. Be off to stay at Tramia for free, but I'm now a professional in, in my sport, so I I need to be working. I'm at a time now where this opportunity came perfectly for me. During my time at Tramia, I rejected a you know, the Hungary at work. I was just started Tramia out of the first four months, so to go away at that point, back then it seemed like a, a no brainer to stay with Tramia. Looking back, with hindsight, maybe it would have been the right thing to do. Ultimately, to, to be offered a job within the field that you've dedicated your, your life to, or at least my adult life, my last 12, 13 years I've dedicated to working for my life, how years learning my trade. I, I moved to Spain on my own accord. to get that experience. It was really for me it was a learning experience, it was a life experience moving abroad. I'd always wanted to do it so at that time in my life it was difficult. I had, I had Middlesbrough, Middlesbrough was on the up, we were going well and we just reached the, no, we just missed out on reaching the final four in the 2012-2013 season. scratch and I think it was going it was going somewhere it was you know, it was a really family environment. Um but yeah me so I needed to come to me. I'd always dreamt about living abroad and and studying for itself so when the opportunities came to go to Spain I had to take it. Ultimately the offer in Malta was a full time position within a semi professional football club in a in a league that's some decent teams in Europe. They last year Luxol got to the main round, so the league itself is it's not a it's not a shabby league. 
the national team and second one in the world rankings, but I'll get back to the national team in a, in a little while. Um, but yeah, absolutely, it was a, it's a job offer. And when you get a job offer, it's a field you love, something you dedicate your life to. In a, in a beautiful country, and give, give them all what you can fulfill what you want to do there. And then come back, coming back to the national team, so the national team coach is Vic Hermans, who's one of the top coaches in the world. He's coached Indonesia, Thailand, Malta previously, Holland, he played in the first World Cup and was the best player there. And to know that he's on the island working with the Maltese FA again, as the national team coach, was an attraction for me. I've known, known Vic for eight to ten years and to have someone like him as a mentor for me was was a big pull, a big pull to come to Malta. Uh, I've, I've met him once already and, and yeah, just to have that knowledge that I can tap into and, and bounce off whenever needed to help the club, to help me, was, um, that was a really nice added bonus to come into Malta. The important thing is for people wanting to work in futsal is work hard in anything you want to do you've got to work hard you've got to put the hours in you've got to put the dedication in you'll start off as a volunteer you might get the odd paid job here but ultimately you're going to start off as a volunteer get as much experience as you can read as much as you can build the connections build your futsal community and you know that's what I was doing from day one within a year of being involved in futsal I was playing in a tournament with FC Barca and Sporting. Sporting at the time were third best in the world and and there was us Middlesbrough Futsal Club getting trounced 18-1, granted, but we were there on the big stage after one year and that was just through sheer ambition um, and making those contacts and thinking, putting yourself out there. I can't the importance of social media, Twitter, Facebook, and making those connections and building those relationships. That helped me right from the start. So that tournament there in Portugal, that's where I met the FC Barca coaches and, and really that changed my, my career totally. Having got in touch with the Barca coaches, I spent time in Barcelona, that's where I met Mark Carmona, and we're talking about eight, ten years ago now. Um, Mark being such a good mentor for me has been a huge help. So you've got to build those relationships. And like I said, within one year of me being, being involved in futsal, I was watching training at one of the top clubs in the world. Imagine that in football. The journey to get there is a lot longer. Not impossible, but a lot longer. Um, so yeah, build, build those connections, work hard go out your way to get that experience. I spent 12 years working for myself, working voluntarily, in my own way, before I got my first real full-time job for myself, which ran me, um, which, which came about through Twitter, and basically I, I was quite prominent on Twitter, I still am, you can find me at Damon underscore score, Damon underscore Shaw, blooper roll there. And yeah, because my profile on there was good, I was respected within the English game because I was in Spain doing my UEFA B, UEFA A, and it was Nicola Palios who got in touch with me by there, and that was, was done within a couple of days. And, and for me, that was my first full time role in football. But I came after 12 years of hard work. Hard work and dedication to becoming a coach and learning from the best. Same thing happened with with Malta. Having left Tranmere, I was obviously a free agent. But we wanted something a bit like we did Tranmere. What we had there was was almost in, in my in my perfect vision. I think the third year would have been would have been really tough. We had 140 
kids, we have the senior team, women's development team. All part of a family that we're really going to push that cup forward and you know, I hope they still do. They've got Matt, Matt for top, Joss at the helm, so hopefully that can carry on. Um, and yeah, that's what Sweet United got in touch with me about. So, but yeah, 13 years of hard work and graft before we in a position to get those, those jobs. Yeah, basically, if you, if you get an opportunity to travel and do something you love, then you've got to take it. Initially, I was thinking maybe I'll come for a year, but now I'm here. The decision's been justified. Yeah, I'm missing home, missing my friends, missing my family, but as always, I can, I can fly back there in a few hours, so getting the opportunity to do something you love isn't, isn't something to turn down, so yeah, basically that's in a nutshell, or in a vlog. Um, yeah, if you've if you've had any hard decisions to make, let me know. Let me know what what you took and, and why. I'd always encourage you to broad, broaden your horizons for the life experience as well. This is the second place I've lived, the second foreign country I've lived in, and um, yeah, I couldn't couldn't recommend it enough. So yeah, go and follow your heart. Do what makes you happy. And thanks for watching.